Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be knock ring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Boom, boom, boom. What a lovely day, said Pat to Jess as they drove along the valley on a fine sunny morning. They came into the village and stopped at the post office as they did every day to collect the letters. Good morning, Pat called. Morning, Pat said Mrs. Goggins. Looks like a busy day for you. Lots of letters and parcels. <laughs> well, at least it's a nice day for it. That's odd, said Mrs. Goggins. Most of the post seems to be for Katie and Tom Pottage. Ah, but of course it's their birthday. <laughs> oh, so it is, said Pat. Won't they be excited when they see all these parcels? They are lucky. I remember when I was their age, waiting for the post. Hey, I'd better be on my way. <laughs> They'll be looking out for me. Well, I'll be off. Goodbye. Boom, 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 boom. Pat was on his way. Before going to the Pottages, he had to call at the village school. Some of the children had arrived early and were playing in the schoolyard. Bill Thompson came running up to take care of the letters till the headmaster came. He always did that because he was the oldest. Oh dear! Right in a puddle. Sarah and Lucy Selby asked Pat if he was good at hopscotch because they'd just had new lines painted in the yard. Well, it's a long time since I played, said Pat, but I'll have a go. Let's see now. He was quite good at it. Whoops! Pat was enjoying the hopscotch so much he almost forgot the time. Hey, I'll have to be going. We can't have the post being late, can we? <laughs> Especially today. Bye-bye, Pat. Goodbye. turned in at Greendale Farm. Katie and Tom saw him coming and ran to meet him. They were so excited they couldn't wait to see what Pat had brought them. They're twins, you see, so it was a double birthday. Pat wished them a happy birthday, then took a letter to their mother.
Tom's present was just what he wanted. But Katie didn't seem very pleased with hers. What's up with Katie? asked Pat. Mm, she's wrong side out today, said Mrs Pottage. She's lost Sarah Ann. Sarah Ann? Is, is that the little doll she takes to school? She takes it everywhere. She's lost without it. I don't know what we'll do if it doesn't turn up. Oh, it's sure to turn up somewhere. Trouble is, it could be anywhere. We went to see Aunt Alice yesterday and called at lots of places. She could have left it anywhere. Don't worry, I'll look for Sarah Ann, said Pat. I might come across her. I'm good at finding things, you know. <laughs> we'll get her smiling again. You'll see. Cheerio. Come on, Jess. We've work to do. Next stop was the church. The Reverend Timms heard Pat's van coming. There was a card from Cousin Joan on holiday in Mallorca. Pat told him about Katie's lost doll. Oh, she could have lost it in the church, said Reverend Timms. She always brings it. Oh well, seek and thou shalt find. Let's have a look. Mind your head. Found anything? called Pat. Oh! Yes, a bump on the head. At last the Reverend Timms did find something, but it wasn't Sarah Ann. It was a lady's glove. It had the letters DT sewn inside. DT, said Pat. Dorothy Thompson, that's whose it is, I'm sure. I'll take it along for her. She will be pleased. Well, I hope Katie's doll turns up somewhere said the Reverend Timms. We'll just keep on looking till it does, said Pat. Thanks for helping. Cheerio. When Pat and Jess arrived at Thompson Ground, Mrs. Thompson was out with a basket, collecting the eggs. She was surprised when Pat gave her a glove with her letters. Well, I never, she said. Where did you find this? I've been looking everywhere for it. Then Pat told her about Katie's doll. I was looking in the church for it. The Reverend Tim's found your glove instead. Now let me see. Katie and her mother came to tea yesterday. She could have left her doll under a cushion. We'd better have a look. They searched everywhere. Mrs. Thompson found something, but it wasn't a doll. It was a penknife. Hey, that looks like Ted Glenn's knife. Goodness knows when he left it here, said Mrs. Thompson. Would you take it along for him? He will be pleased to have it back. Yes, I'll take it. I do hope you find Katie's doll. We'll keep looking. See you tomorrow. Cheerio. Bye-bye, Pat. What a day, said Pat to Jess. We found a glove and a penknife 
but no Sarah Ann. I wonder if there's any chance of finding her at Ted Glenn's. Ted Glenn was delighted to see his knife. He couldn't guess where Pat had found it. When Pat told him about Katie's lost doll, Ted said, hey, She was here yesterday with her mother. Uh, they brought a lamp to repair. So they went to look in Ted's workshop. They didn't find the doll, but Ted found a watch that he'd forgotten he had. <laughs> Enjoying yourself, Pat. That's Miss Hubbard's, he said. She brought it to be mended ages ago. She must have forgotten all about it. Would you take it for a Pat? Certainly, I'm going that way. I hope you find the lassie's doll, said Ted. So do I, said Pat. I seem to be able to find everything else. Bye, Ted. So long, then. Miss Hubbard was shopping at Sam's mobile shop whilst Sam was enjoying a cup of tea. Miss Hubbard was surprised to see Pat. And even more surprised to see her watch. Pat told them all about Katie's lost doll, but they hadn't seen it. Poor Katie, said Pat, and on her birthday too. I know. I'll take her a box of chocolates. <laughs> That'll cheer her up. Aha! Sarah Ann. So that's where you've been hiding all this time. It's Katie's doll, said Pat. I found her when I wasn't looking for her, sitting behind the chocolates. Sam was amazed. That child gets everywhere. I'll take the chocolates anyway, said Pat. They'll make a nice birthday present. Cheerio! Here she is, Jess. Keep an eye on her. When Pat arrived at the twins' party with Sarah Ann and the chocolates, Katie gave a big smile, the first that day. Jess joined in the party. And Pat had a piece of cake. <coughs> Delicious, said Pat. But it's time we were off. Bye-bye, <laughs> Pat. Bye. Goodbye, everyone. Have a good time. One sunny morning, Pat was hurrying along the road with a van full of letters and parcels for the people of Greendale. Suddenly, he had to stop. <laughs> it was Alf Thompson driving his sheep across the road. Don't worry, Jess. They won't eat you. The sheep went into a field, and Pat was on his way again.
his next stop was at the village school. Where is everybody? The children were bringing things to school for a display. Charlie Pringle had a bunch of flowers. Lucy Selby had brought a basket of eggs. My, your hens have been busy. And Tom Pottage had some day old chicks. Hey, mind how you go. Whilst looking at all these things, Pat had forgotten his letters. But Bill Thompson came along with a cup of tea. Thank you, said Pat. And Bill took the letters. Sarah Gilbertson came for his cup. Have you done? She said. Nearly. Thanks, Sarah. That was grand. Goodbye. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock ring letters through your door <laughs> Postman Pat Postman Pat Postman Pat and his black and white cat All the birds are singing the day is just beginning Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat feels he's a really happy man Pat was getting on well with his round. He locked his van and as it was a nice day for a picnic, he took his sandwiches to a field on the hill above Thompson ground. E, it's been an easy day today. It was so warm that Pat soon fell asleep. Oh dear. But Mrs. Thompson's hens were wide awake and Pat had left his sandwich box open with his keys neatly beside it. The noise woke Pat, just in time to chase after his sandwiches. And then he turned round in time to see a cheeky hen stealing his keys.
I must get my keys back. I can't open the van or deliver my letters without them. Oh, so that's where you've got to. Oh dear, it's a long time since I climbed a tree. But here goes. <clears throat> Oops. Uh. Pat was just reaching out when the hen dropped the keys and flew off. Now the keys were stuck in the tree, and as Pat was climbing towards them, the branch gave way and... Oh! Right in the middle of a prickly bush. Ouch! Mrs. Thompson had heard the commotion and came to see what was going on. Pat told her about the thieving hen. Deary me, said Mrs. Thompson, the little devil. She must think she's a magpie or some such. We'd better get a ladder and see if we can reach your keys. There'll be no more posts today unless we can, said Pat. That won't do, said Mrs. Thompson, especially when I'm expecting a letter from Auntie Jean to say whether she's coming for Easter or not. So they went for the ladder. I'll take it now. They're here, all right. Look, I've got them. There's something else up here. Lots of things. It's like a magpie's nest. My. He brought everything down to show Mrs. Thompson. There were all kinds of shiny things. There's my wedding ring that went missing last Easter. I thought I'd lost it down the sink. That's all right. Uh, I'll get it down. Mind your head. As my hens have stolen your sandwiches, you'd better come and have some dinner with me. There's plenty to spare. That's very nice of you. Pat was glad he lost his sandwiches when he saw what a good dinner Mrs. Thompson had cooked. Mrs. Thompson was glad too she'd got her ring back. But it was soon time to be off. Thanks for the meal. It was lovely. Come on, Jess. Jess. Come on. Just fancy, said Pat. A magpie hen. <laughs> Who ever heard of such a thing? stopped to tell Sam Waldron about the magpie hen. It had better keep away from my van, he said. I wonder if that's where my tie pin went.
Hmm. Sounds odd. Oh, just needs a clean. When Pat saw Miss Hubbard, he told her about the magpie hen. Well, I lost a silver earring last month, she said. And a hat pin. I wonder if they're up a tree somewhere. I must go and see Mrs. Thompson. On the way home, Pat met Alf Thompson on his tractor and stopped to tell him about the magpie hen. Alf couldn't think of anything he'd lost, but he thought it was a good story. Pat had a letter for him. Ooh, one for me. I'll not lose this anyway. Cheerio. Bye. saw some real magpies on the way home and wondered if they had taught Mrs. Thompson's hens to steal. As for Jess, <laughs> he was asleep. It was a special day for Pat, but he was keeping it a secret. Now then, Jess, don't you give my secret away. Mrs. Goggins was looking out for Pat. She was very pleased about something. Hello, Pat, she said. There's a lot of post today. Pat didn't look too happy until he saw that most of it was for him. But who could be writing to Pat? One envelope had a drawing of a cat on it and the writing looked very much like Katie Pottage's. Why don't you open them? Then you'll know who sent them. So Pat did. What a surprise. They were all birthday cards. He stood them in a row along the counter. There was one from every person on his round. That was nice. But how did everyone know it was his birthday today? He'd kept it a secret all these years, and now they all knew. Funny. How on earth they found out, I couldn't say. But let me wish you a happy birthday too, and many happy returns. Pat bought six chocolate kittens. Then gathered up all his cards and letters and went on his way. Greendale Farm, the twins were looking out for Pat. Happy birthday, Pat, they said as he came in with the post. Mm, thank you. Mrs. Pottage had just come in from the kitchen. Happy birthday, she said. Pat showed the twins his cards. We've made you a cake. How did you know it was my birthday? said Pat. We're not telling, said Mrs. Pottage. It's a secret. <laughs> it was a secret, said Pat with a laugh. Here's a sugar mouse for Jess, said Tom. Thank you very much. Now let me see. Have I got everything? Cake, mouse, cards...
Goodbye. Jess spotted the mouse. He thought he'd catch it before it got lost. No, said Pat. Save it for tea time. It won't run away. But Jess wasn't so sure. Hello, Reverend. A letter for you. Oh, thank you. Mm, been expecting this. And here's something for you to greet you on your birthday. Thank you, said Pat. It was a leather-bound Bible. Oh, thank you. But how did you know? He who reads shall learn. Very kind of you. Goodbye. Godspeed. There were some letters for Thompson Ground. Come in. Pat arrived just in time for a cup of tea. Thank you. Oh, your letter. Alf Thompson came in. Hello, Pat, he said. Happy birthday. He gave him a walking stick with a handle made from a sheep's horn. He'd made it himself. That'll be good for keeping dogs off. Thanks, said Pat. But how did you know it was my birthday? Oh, you'll have to find that out for yourself. Just keep your eyes open, said Alf, smiling. You're quite a famous postman, you know. Whatever does he mean, thought Pat. He was getting more and more puzzled, and his van was filling up with presents. <laughs> Jess didn't like the stick. He thought the horn might butt him when he wasn't looking. Granny Dryden was busy cooking when Pat arrived with the letters. He'd brought her groceries too, as the mobile shop couldn't get up the lane to her cottage. Morning! Post! Granny Dryden had knitted something for Pat's birthday. Whatever was it? A woolly vest. It'll keep you warm in the winter, said Granny Dryden. <laughs> it looked very itchy. But Pat said, thank you, it's, it's just the right size. How did you know it was my birthday? Eh? I can't hear a word you say, said Granny Dryden. I need a new battery in my earring aid. Uh, I'll bring you one tomorrow, said Pat. Goodbye. At Miss Hubbard's cottage, there was a glass of fruit juice waiting for Pat. There were two letters for her. Miss Hubbard drank his health and wished him a happy birthday. 
Cheers. She gave him a steering wheel cover made of red velvet. Thank you. That's lovely. <laughs> she didn't tell him how she knew it was his birthday. Goodbye. <laughs> At Intake Farm, George Lancaster showed Pat his special prize hens. They look champion, said Pat. They are, they champion layers, said George. Just look at that. He gave him two dozen for his birthday and a dozen for the village school. Thanks for the eggs, George. Then Sam Waldron arrived and gave Pat a punnet of strawberries and a carton of double cream for his birthday tea. Thank you, Sam. Lucy was on the lookout for Pat at the village school. The children had made a picture of him on a big sheet of card with Happy Birthday written underneath and all their names. They'd also made a model of his van, but they wouldn't tell him how they knew it was his birthday. Pat had presents for them, a chocolate kitten each and the eggs from George Lancaster. Goodbye. The day's round was nearly finished. Pat was just looking to see if there were any letters to collect when Peter Fogg came along on his tractor. He stopped to wish Pat a happy birthday. Pat told him how everyone seemed to know about it. <laughs> Don't you know why? said Peter Fogg, laughing. I wish I did, said Pat. Peter showed him a newspaper. It was this week's Pencaster Gazette. Have a look at this, he said. Pat was amazed. There was an article about him, headed Postman of the Year. It told all about his work, how he helped everyone, where he was born, and the date of his birthday. Well, said Pat, how did they find all that out? Keep it as a souvenir, said Peter. Thanks, said Pat. I'll show it to the wife. <laughs> she will be pleased. All right, Jess, I'm coming. I know it's been a long day, but we're off home now. It's a pity no one knows when it's your birthday, Jess. Never mind, we'll have a little party tonight. Ooh, another nasty day, said Pat. Jess looked out at the rain. He hated wet days. What a day, wet letters, wet everything. It was still raining when Pat reached the village post office. Dreadful weather. Just look at these letters. 
Imagine them getting so wet just being posted. It's like a wet wash day. <laughs> I see what you mean. Never mind, they'll soon dry. You'd best watch out for floods up the valley. There's more rain forecast, you know. Mm, don't you worry, Mrs Goggins. The post will get through. Oh, it stopped raining. Cheerio. Pat was on his way. What a dismal day it was. Some people still had lights on indoors. What had happened to Peter Fogg? Pat stopped to find out. It's this blooming rain. My old tractor's bogged down in the bottom meadow. It's our flooded down there. Then I went and fell in the mud. <laughs> you look as if you've had a bath in it. I just about have. I'm off home for some dry clothes, then I'll get the new tractor to pull the old one out. Good luck, said Pat. I think it's fairing up now. Cheerio. When Pat arrived at the school, some of the children were looking out to see if the rain had stopped. He was surprised to see Charlie Pringle running out for the letters instead of Bill Thompson. Hello, Charlie. Where's Bill, then? He's off school today. They say there's flooding up at Thompson Ground. He'll be helping his dad get the sheep in. Well, don't drop the letters. They've already had one wetting. <laughs> it's nice to see someone enjoying the rain, thought Pat. Watch it. Cheerio! Greendale Farm, he saw Peter Fogg again. He'd changed his clothes. Here, Pat. Come and have a look at this. He showed Pat his new tractor with its bulldozer blade. This'll shift anything, he said. <laughs> Bet it would, said Pat. Oh, here's your mail. Oh, ta. Bye. Reverend Timms was having trouble with the rain, too.
day, Pat, said the Reverend. The rain rains on the just and the unjust. Look out. I'll ask Ted Glenn to bring his ladders and have a look at that roof, said Pat. Bye. Farewell, Pat. Sam Waldron was just along the road. Take it steady, Pat, said Sam. The roads are flooding up the valley. <laughs> the old van will get me through, said Pat. I'll just take a bunch of bananas. The wife loves them. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Jess was glad to stay in the van to keep out of the wet. They were getting into the hills when they saw Mrs. Thompson standing in the road, waving to make them stop. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. What's going on? said Pat. There are terrible floods in the top fields, Pat. And the water's brought tons of earth down and blocked the road. Come and see. Oh, dear me, said Pat. Can't we telephone the village for help? No, the lines are down. Well, can't we walk round it? No, oh, it's too dangerous with these floods. And you could be buried if the land started to slip again. Here comes Alf. He's going to try to get through with his tractor. Do you think you can do it? said Pat. Oh, I'll have a jolly good try. Off he went at top speed. And got stuck. It's no good, said Alf. We'll have to get help somehow. Then Bill came with his model aeroplane. I know, he said. We can put a message on my plane and I can fly it across to Greendale Farm to get help. It's radio controlled, see? What a good idea. Clever lad. We'll send an airmail letter. So Pat scribbled a note. S-O-S. That'll do it. He tied it to the plane with a bit of Alf's binder twine. Good luck. Let's hope it gets through. Oh, I think he'll manage it. He's a clever lad. He built it himself, you know. Bill started the engine. And off it flew. Away she goes. That's better than a van. <laughs> I wonder if I could swap mine for a helicopter.
It seemed ages since the plane had gone. Pat was just thinking it must have crashed when he heard a powerful engine coming up the road on the other side of the blockage. It was Peter Fogg on his new tractor with the bulldozer blade. Got your message! Mind your back! Oh, oh! waved Sam Waldron through. There was just enough room. <laughs> Ted Glenn was mending a wall for Mr. Pottage. Pat had remembered something. Can you go and have a look at the church roof, Ted? The Reverend's got the church full of buckets. <laughs> I'll pop along when I've finished this wall. Blooming rain. It makes no end of work. Miss Hubbard was on her way to choir practice. I'd turn back if I were you, said Pat. <laughs> or you might have to swim home. Swim? said Miss Hubbard. It'll take more than a drop of rain to stop me. And on she went. I'll be on my way too, said Pat. Cheerio. As Pat wound his way along the valley, it looked like rain again but there was a warm fireside to look forward to. <laughs> when all the letters had been delivered. It was a cloudy morning in Greendale, but as Pat set out along the valley on his way to the village post office, it brightened up. <coughs> a large van was parked in the narrow road. It was Sam's mobile shop. It was going to be a tight squeeze getting past, Come on, straighten up. Come on, you could get a bus through there. Plenty of room. Hello, Sam. Thanks. Could you, uh, could you give these to Mrs. Atkinson, please? Right, old Pat. Mind how you go. Oh, dear. I think we're stuck. It's all that rain, it's made the ground boggy. Hello, Pat. Still here? Yes, I am. <laughs> I'm stuck in the mud. I'll give Pete Fogg a shout as I go past. He can tow you out with his tractor. Hang on. Thanks, Sam. Ah, uh, well. Looking at life through a farmer's eyes Always aware of the changing skies The wind and the rain they all make their claim as he plows and he sows and sets seeds into rows. He sees all the wonders that nature can bring as he works all the year to bring rich harvests in. Looking at life through a farmer's eyes, always aware of the changing skies. Hedgerows with birds, wild animals and trees In the bright summer sun, he sees busy honeybees And he's working with nature, as all round the farm He'll try to make sure good things come to no harm 
summer and winter seasons of there's never a time when there's nothing to do setting the crops and preparing the land he always can do with a good helping hand Looking at life through a farmer's eyes Always aware of the changing skies He works between forests and valleys and hills For the flat even plains with an unbroken view But wherever it is, still the farmers can claim That they work for our bread with their harvests of grain Wherever it is, the farmers can claim that they work for our bread with their harvests of rain. Peter came at last. Hello, Peter. Can you tow me out, please? <laughs> My van's stuck in the mud. Easy! Sam said you'd need help. Uh, I'll just back up. Now then, uh, just tie it on there. Right. All right. Ready? Bye. Thanks a lot. Pat was on his way again. Morning. Morning, Pat. You're a bit late today. Yes, I got held up down by Atkinson's. I was trying to get past Sam's van, and I got stuck on the grass verge. Then I had to wait for Peter Fogg to come and pull me out with his tractor. Oh, a good thing he did. Look, Major Forbes' bull. It won first prize at the county show. Isn't it a magnificent animal? Have you seen it? <laughs> no, and I don't think I want to either. There's a letter for the Major, so you might meet the bull. Better keep a sharp lookout. I'd run a mile if I saw it. Cheerio. Ted Glenn was waving to Pat to make him stop. Some fool's left a gate open. I bet it's those campers. The sheep have got into the clover field. It'll kill them if they eat too much. Uh, can you give me a hand to drive them back? Yes, of course I will. I used to work on a farm when I was a lad. Have they gone far, then? You can see them up there. They've spread out a bit. We'd better get after them. Hang on, Pat. <laughs> We've left a gate open now. We're as bad as the campers. I'll shut it. Ah. 
Uh, you go that way, and I'll go this. Right. warm work. What's that funny noise? Hey up, it's that bull. Run! Ooh. Oh! Hey, wait for me! What's up, Ted? Oh, it's my ankle. Oh, by gum it does hurt. Ouch! I can't get up. I think I've broken it. Now what are we going to do? You can't sit here till it gets better. I'd better go and get Dr Gilbertson from the village. Won't be long. Pat gave Dr Gilbertson her letters and told her about Ted's broken ankle. Oh dear, my car's in Pencaster being serviced, said the doctor. Then I'll take you in my van. So Dr Gilbertson brought her bag. She sat in Jessie's place. Ted was glad to see the doctor. Oh! Ooh! Ouch! She soon bandaged his ankle up. It wasn't broken, just badly sprained. Try not to put too much weight on it now. Pat's walking stick came in handy. Thanks, Pat. Oh. Eat my gum. You'll have to ride amongst the letters, Ted. Easy now. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Jess rode on Dr. Gilbertson's knee until they arrived back at the surgery. Bye, Pat. Ted was glad to get home. You all right now? I'll manage. Thanks for helping. Cheerio. Bye. Pat was on his way again. He still had a lot of letters and parcels to deliver. Hello, Alf. Hello, Pat. Uh, thanks for getting the sheep back. It's the same thing every year. Gates left open all over the place. We'll have to have words with them campers, won't we, Dot? What a morning, Jess. Rounding up sheep, dodging bulls, 
fetching doctors. And now we're late with all this post. We'll have to get a move on this afternoon. Postman, postman Pat, can you guess what's in his bag? Is there a letter? Is there a parcel? Is there a postcard? What's left? Just the cat. 